Yeah, it's gonna be okay. It'll be alright. Alright. So, a lot of people have asked me to do an update. We're gonna do these periodically because I think it's really important to do as we talk about this startup. We're gonna call this segment keeping it real because that's what we're gonna do. And a lot of the other stuff, we try and keep it upbeat, but there's days when you just feel like you've had your freaking butt handed to you and you wonder why in the world did I ever decide to do this? I was phoning it in, I, I could have not done this at all and been just fine. And yet here I am struggling. And I don't know if you can see me, but this is what today looks like on me. Got to the job, new house, and one of the many new neighborhoods down here. It hadn't rained in a while, so we weren't planning on any water, but guess what? They got new sod, and everybody got new sod, and so they're absolutely flooding everything, and there's standing water everywhere. These people have dogs, and they're in a hurry to get their fence in, and so we're traipsing through this mud all day. My feet were soaking wet all day. It wasn't even a big job, and we didn't get the whole thing done. I had a nice hour and 15 minute drive home and got to kind of reflect on like, well, you know, what would I do? Not to mention like, why in the world did I do this? Cause this is one of those days like, oh my gosh, why, why did I take on this? Because granted I'm not old, but I didn't have to do this in Wyoming. Why would I want to do this here? And there's going to be days in your contractor life when you're like, I could just go punch a clock for somebody else or do what I was doing before. And you just feel completely deflated and beat up you want to give up and it's a good thing that I have this challenge going for me because I've said it numerous times and you'll probably hear me say it again is if it wasn't for this two-year challenge to try and reach three million dollars I'd probably just say this isn't worth it I'd find somebody to take it over and I'd let him have it for a song and a dance and um, I'd be done because I don't need any of this in fact this isn't even paying me I'm getting I get to the privilege of practicing and because we're building something and we're trying to make it financially stable, I'm not even getting paid for all this. Tanya's working for free and it wears on you. You're like, just why? Why would I do this? Uh, earlier in the week, we did a project, um, did a bid for some people and they said, yeah, we want to do that. And uh, so we did the HOA application, did all the stuff. And then they came uh, back and said, yeah, it all looks good. We got the HOA approval. And so we rushed to get over there and get it done for them because they're in a hurry to get it done. Uh, went and did it. And then I get a call from the husband that evening and he was not happy with me. The reason he wasn't happy is because when the project was all said and done, he just didn't feel like it was, there was enough there to justify what we were charging. He didn't quite understand that we had turned in a bid and did exactly what was on the bid. We had drawn out what we were gonna do. We stated very clearly what we were gonna do, but he just felt like we should have done more, that there should have been more for the price that he paid. And I don't know how I argue with that. And so I got to spend on a project that we had already made two mobilizations just to try and keep them happy by doing the aluminum in one trip and the vinyl in another trip. Lost even more money because now I gotta go back and do a third trip um, but it's all about customer satisfaction, so I'm not, I'm not upset about that, but uh, I got to spend 45 minutes listening to him tell me how I don't have integrity because I did exactly what I said I was going to do and exactly what I stated we were going to do and exactly the manner we said we were going to do it and exactly the time we said we were going to do it and for the exact dollar that we said we were going to do it, and he still wasn't happy. So those days make it very difficult, and so to make them happy, we're gonna go out and put in a little bit more fence. And um, because in all of that, I recognized that maybe our new salesperson didn't depict something quite right on, on the drawing and there could have been a little bit of confusion on one side, although that was not the side he was upset about. We're just doing that because at least I can clear my conscience and hopefully we'll get a good review out of it in the end of the, at the end of the day. But that's weeks like this that are gonna completely run you over. You're gonna wonder why, why? Why would I do this? Why do I do this? I understand what you're going through if you're a small business and a small contractor and you're trying to make it because I'm here with you. There is days when I'm, I've got the highest of highs, you know, I'm like, wow, we're gonna, we're just gonna absolutely crush it. And we get beat up on school bids and stuff like that. And I have 10 people tell me how expensive we are and they don't want anything to do with me. and. I mean, I get that, but then I'll have the one person that says, you know what, we saw you, we're really comfortable with you, and that gets me on my high high, and that reminds me why I do this. And then I'll have three days of people beating up on me again, also that I can get that fourth day of my high. And 
I'm like a contractor junkie. That's what it is. I'm a contractor junkie just going from one high to the next. And not to mention that people just run me over the whole other rest of the time. So that's where we're at this week. I'm not on a high. I look like crap. I feel like crap. I just want to go sleep. It's 7.23 at night and we started this morning at 7 o'clock in the morning. This is my life. This is the life that I chose. And even my wife is saying, why? Why did you do this to yourself? But I hope you enjoy what we bring you because this is your, probably your life too. If you're watching this channel, this is your life. And how do we get out of this? Because I guarantee you, if in two years I'm anywhere close to where I am today, I am done. This is not gonna continue. Not gonna, I'm gonna find somebody that really wants this hassle, but I just feel like eventually, you know, within, by the end of summer, I'm hoping we have it put together and we have more people. But really what I need now is I just need somebody that can lead because as the only leader, I'm out in the field, I'm in the office and I'm wore out. I'm just wore out because I can't send any crews out in the field without me being there. So I'm doing all the work plus all the behind the scenes stuff. And that's where I'm getting wore out. And I know that there's a bunch of you out there that are in the exact same spot. And that's really the biggest hurdle is if you want to grow, how do you get out of that, that cycle where you're the only guy that can do anything. And so you're constantly, I hate to use the term babysitting, but I'm the only competent person there. So to make sure that a job gets done right, I have to be on site all the time. And so we're really working on training our people and making sure they understand the principles and hopefully within even the next month, we're a lot further along and we can turn one or two guys loose and have them run a crew and then maybe I can do some stuff and we can split up a little bit and we can uh, train other people. But it's really all about training and we're very much in the infancy of our training at this point in time. So I am in the middle of everything and it is terrible. It's terrible. Hey, you know what? So today it's a whole new day. So yesterday when I took the video, uh, we were not done having fun because yesterday after I took the video, I got a phone call and the phone call was when we were pulling the trailer into the shop. I was talking to you on the phone and I got sidetracked and I was backing up and I jackknifed the trailer and oops, you have a dent in the back end of your truck now. Hmm. Dang it. All right. Not a lot we can do about that. We're going to move on. So this morning I had a doctor's appointment and we had everything lined out. I sent them a text with everything we need to do and get loaded up so that they can go do the job so I can go to my doctor's appointment super early. And that was because I've got a bunch of pain in my neck, like right between my shoulder blades. So I have this pain in my neck and I go to the doctor and to try and make the pain in my neck better. I'm in the doctor's office waiting to be seen and the pain in my neck gets a lot worse. When I get a phone call, and they say, hey, we were on the way to the job site and the special aluminum gate that you had specially made that's about yay wide to fit this very special unique opening for this customer to make them happy. And this is, by the way, the customer that didn't think that we were delivering enough value and they didn't feel like that they had gotten enough fence for the price tag that we had put on it. Trying to make them happy while well, it blew out of the trailer. Oh, oh goody, oh goody. We'll send you pictures, okay. I said, well, how did it fall out of the trailer? Because I have a dump trailer, which, you know, Dumpy G has a cover. And I'm like, we weren't carrying that much stuff today. We could have just pulled the cover across. So how in the world did this gate blow out when we were supposed to have it not only covered, but we should have had it bundled with some pickets that we had. And it was supposed to be sandwiched on top of there and wrapped up. Well, turns out we only put one strap on it. We put cardboard under it. The wind got underneath the cardboard, pushed the gate up this way, ripped the strap off and then out the out the back end of the dump trailer. And I'm like, oh geez. And then they sent me some pictures and it was clear to see that we didn't take any care whatsoever and how we loaded the trailer to make sure that the vinyl wasn't gonna just slide around in this big open space and scratch itself up on the way to the job site. Now I have made jokes about this in the past that in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, we do a lot of work where people want things antiqued. And so I joke with people and I say, you know what, the best way to earn a little bit of extra money from the customers is to take the piece of, take all your vinyl and just scratch the crap out of it on the way to the job site. That way we can get a change order for antiquing their vinyl and it's highly sought after and people love it. I'm only kidding, that is not exactly, that is not at all how customers view this if we do this. Needless to say, we were about to antique a bunch of vinyl and probably not get paid for any of it. As soon as I saw the pictures, I said, we've got to go back to the shop and before we 
go an hour away. And so we went back to the shop and we had a lesson on how to package stuff and how the more compact you make it, as long as it's compact and you have stuff so that the friction doesn't cause it to wear itself thin, then it should be good. And so went over how to load a trailer and actually I asked him, I said, were you worried that I was just gonna yell at you? Well, yeah, because you sounded like you were pretty angry on the phone. And I said, no, not angry, that's not the word. And I said, disappointed, and that was the word. The word was disappointed. I was very disappointed that not only did one person think that that strap job for that gate was gonna do good, but three other people checked off on it and said, wee, let's go. And then we lose a gate out the back end of the dump trailer, the special gate, special gate, and spend a bunch of time reloading the trailer, doing everything correctly. And this is just the type of thing we have, and it's not their fault. It's because we're teaching them everything. And that's why even for, I thought I would be good for an hour this morning without my supervision and that's why I have to be there all the time and that's why I'm just so mentally and physically exhausted is because if I'm gone for even an hour at this point in this venture I feel like something like this is going to happen and the next time what's going to happen this gate's going to end up in somebody's windshield and so I'm very nervous to let go because there are so many mistakes being made on a frequent basis that I know if I'm not there to teach and mentor enough then we're gonna have a serious accident and that's not what I want. And we could be risking it all before I even get this thing going. So that's a little bit about today. We went back to the job that was a nightmare from yesterday. We finished it up uh, and then found more problems. Um, one of the posts, nobody decided, we leveled it one way and forgot to level it the other way. So we got to dig that up and fix that. We got a gate that was cut wrong. The rail for the bottom was cut at one dimension and the rail for the top was cut half an inch shorter. And so these are just the plethora of problems that we run into as we train new people that have zero skills. Some of them have some skills, but definitely nothing in the fence business. So, oh, I did, I did pick these up. Uh, these are gonna be my new best friend here in Florida, muck shoes, because I refuse to wear full on boots. But after yesterday's wet feet all day long and probably three or four other days of wet feet all day long, I've decided that these are gonna ride with me everywhere I go. And today I got to go back to that job and my feet are bone dry. Um, I don't look quite as bad, a little dirty, but not bad. It's either these or flip flops. I'm just gonna either embrace the wet or keep it all off me, one of the two. But that was today, maybe a little bit better, we did not make it to the second job that we were supposed to do to finish up the gate that flew out of the back of the trailer. So hopefully Monday sees us back on that job and we can make a happy customer. So anyhow, I'm wore out, I'm done. Uh, we're not working Fridays. I've decided to work four long days instead of five days. One of, that, one of the reasons for that is, is because I just don't have the time and energy. After I get through four days of this, I am done. And I still have to then go review bids and do more bids and all the other stuff. So I need that one day of solitude and then a good strong two day weekend for my own mental health because this is exhausting. Until next time, you have a good dang day.